Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yawm ad-din thumma amma ba'd food for thought unity upon what they say unity is something that is one of the objectives of the religion that as muslims we are unified upon that which is correct that we are unified upon the truth but this unity we have to examine it. How do we accomplish it? Unity, unity upon what? And what is it that will unite us? It is incumbent and it is good that we first by start by examining those elements and those factors by way in which we are not able to achieve unity by way of them. So for example, unity is not based upon agreeing with one or two scholars. Unity is not based upon agreeing with the opinions of one or two scholars. We will not be able to find unity based upon these means. Unity is not found by agreeing with a group of students of knowledge. We will not find unity if we base it upon this means. This, this is not a foundation by way in which unity is built upon. Unity is not based upon coming together on a particular madhab of Islamic jurisprudence. That we come together in agreement upon a particular school of Islamic jurisprudence. We will not be able to find unity based upon that. Unity, it is not based upon these things. Unity is not based upon a particular land that a person originates from or a land that a particular person lives in. So unity is not based upon being centric to a particular land or a particular place or region. Unity is not based upon the gender. We're not going to be able to unite on issues or the gender are not going to be able to unite just based upon gender, skin color, hair type, so on and so forth. Unity is not based upon a particular language and unity is not based upon blind following but they say unity based upon what if we agree with your particular set of scholars on a particular set of issues could we then be united and be friends if we agree to speak bad about so and so and to ostracize such and such, and to stay away from so and so, could we unite then and be friends? If we agree to warn against these individuals, and to warn against these ones and the like, and bar them from participating in our events, so on and so forth, could we then unite and be friends? The question then therefore becomes, the real question is, those are four things mentioned. Are these unifying factors even to begin with? Are these things by way in which people unify upon to begin with? So unity upon what they say. Those are four mentioned things. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us to unite upon those things? Did Allah ta'ala tell us to unite because we all speak the same language? Did Allah tell us to unite because we all have the skin co same skin color? Did Allah tell us to unite based upon the fact that we all follow a particular sheikh from the shuyukh, from a particular alim, from the ulama, a particular scholar from the scholars? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us to unite because we have to agree with so-and-so based upon a particular issue and thus then therefore see it in the exact same way that they see it? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us to unite based upon blind following? Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specify these things, the aforementioned things, and then thus tell us to unite based upon these things and these things only? Is this from the way of the pious predecessors to begin with? That upon these things they unite and nothing else? 
Is this what we learn from our religion? Is this unity? It is incumbent and it's important that we really ask these questions. Because there are individuals who will put forth claims and say that we are to unite upon this or we can't or we cannot unite with those individuals based upon that. And then they mention factors that have nothing to do with unity in reality. And if you say that we have to agree with your sheikh because of a particular issue, we have to agree with your sheikh as relates to a particular personality, that we have to agree with whatever you say and see it the way you see it, and thus subsequently identify with what you tell us to identify from stances and so on and so forth, and that this is what is needed and required to be unified. If you're saying that unity is only based upon submission unto your opinions, then where is your proof and evidence? Where is your proof and evidence that everyone has to agree with you? Where is your proof and evidence that everyone has to agree with your sheikh? your scholar, your teacher? Where's your proof and evidence that everyone has to see it the way you see it? Where's your proof and evidence that everyone has to learn from you and those who are in your circle? Where's your proof and evidence that this is from the way of the self? Where's your proof and evidence that this is from the deen? Where's your proof and evidence that we are supposed to unite upon the likes of these things? So when they say unity, unity based on what? What is your understanding of unity? What do you think it means to unify? And upon what is it that you yourself unify upon, because then maybe, then therefore we can understand better what you're getting at and what you're talking about. Produce your proof and evidence so that it could be studied, it could be examined, it could be taken back to the scholars. Present what you feel you have to present so we can look at it. Because when you say that so-and-so is not upon the truth, based upon what? When you say that we can't unite with these individuals, because of, state your reasons why. Produce your proof and evidence. Because from what we know, what is clear in the religion, is that whenever we differ in anything, we bring it back to the source. Allah Ta'ala says, And if you differ in anything, then refer it back to Allah and His Messenger. Refer it back to the Qur'an. Refer it back to the sunnah. As understood by the salaf of this ummah, refer it back to the text. So now let us examine these issues that you're speaking about. Is there proof and evidence from Islam? Is there proof and evidence from the book and from the sunnah? Is there proof and evidence that we are to see it the way you see it and that it translates into what you say it translates into? And that the course of action is the course of action that you have dictated and said that is the course of action? Show us your proofs and evidence. Because when we differ in anything, we refer back to the book and the sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us what to unite upon. It's very clear. Allah ta'ala, he tells us, وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا and hold all of you together to the rope of Allah and do not separate, do not divide. Hold on to the rope of Allah, hold on to the truth. So what unites us is what is the truth. We view everything by way of the book and the sunnah. We view everything by way of the kitab, the Quran, and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, as understood by the salaf of this ummah. That's how we view things. If it coincides with the truth, then we agree with it and we hold on to it. If it does not coincide with the truth, then we disagree with it and we do not accept it. We don't give it any credence regardless of who said it. So when you say unite, unite upon what? Unite upon what they say. Yeah, subhanAllah. This is what we know from the book in the sunnah. This is what we know from what it means to hold on to the book in the sunnah. This is what we know from a salafiyya. If you are upon something different and you believe that in order to be upon the sunnah, you have to agree with this sheikh or that sheikh or this one and that. Where is that from following the book in the sunnah? Where is that from the way of the salaf that everyone has to agree upon every single thing? And where is it from the way of the salaf that just because we don't agree upon a particular issue means that then therefore one is excluded? Based on what? What's the issue? What's the issue that excludes you? 
What's the issue that thus has excluded those whom you say are no longer from its circle? And don't play games. Don't bring forth false analogies, but state the exact issue as relates to these particular and specific individuals. Or be quiet. Retract your statement. If you can't bring forth the proof and the evidence, then be quiet and retract your statement. If you can't bring forth the proofs and the evidence, be quiet and retract your statements. Because we are only to unite upon the truth. Not upon skin color. Not upon place of origin. Not upon mother tongue. Not upon, not upon, not upon, not upon blind following. We are supposed to unite upon the rope of Allah as Allah Ta'ala commanded us to do. Hold all of you on to the rope of Allah and do not separate and do not divide. If you claim that we have separated and divided from the rope of Allah, prove it. Bring forth your proof and your evidence if you are telling the truth. If you claim that we have separated from the rope of Allah, then Prove it or retract your statement and shut your mouth.